Hey everyone, Stephen Munchaw, the artistic director of Annie Get Your Gun. And today I'm going to be talking with Katie Harmon. She's got a lot of great things to say for vocalists and um, actors who are involved in musical theater and opera. We are really excited to have you in on Annie Get Your Gun. And um, over the last couple of uh, weeks and months, we've been in communication about bringing Katie into the show and, and what it what it's going to be like and kind of talking about the big dream the big the outcome of it and is it everything that you think it was or gonna was gonna be or what do you more, think more oh. Steven, and more all right all right i Talk have to me. been so excited about this from the minute that you called me yeah and we emailed back and forth and we kind of conceptualized this and yeah. bringing in your ideas of fusing greatest showman with the 1999 revival of annie get your Gun. Yeah. It is all starting to materialize beautifully. Beautiful. Oh, that's, that's so awesome. I'm so excited for this. I love the cast. I love the crew. Uh, the dynamics are really what is putting this puzzle together. That's so cool. And, now, yeah. now, so you you won Miss America 2002, and, and you were a vocalist. And I mean, that kind of really set, set you apart and set your career apart. So then... Um, how has your career evolved over the last number of years? I mean, what are some of the things that you've done? Well, that certainly was, you know, the greatest professional audition sure. I could ever do. Yeah. <laughs> was there on stage at Miss America in front of 24 million people, you um, know, the audience that was there, the, those who were watching on television. Yeah. And I actually got my first professional opera gig from that. Oh, wow. Which was crazy. So um, the Gold Coast Opera in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, okay. um, they called, and they actually called during my year as Miss America, and the, the Miss America organization said, no, she is engaged in her formal duties sure, yeah. throughout the year, yeah. but you can contact uh, her management team for after her year concludes. Okay. Okay. And so that's exactly what they did. Cool. So before that year as Miss America was up, I had my first gig in that following year with them um, in the Student Prince. Wow. And so my uh, background in musical theater and opera was really in those classic roles. Okay. My voice fits more with kind of a torch sound, with very classic musical theater roles. Um, I've done Mary and the Librarian. Okay. Um, I've done Lily in the Secret Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, all of those those ladies, Yum yeah. Yum and the Mikado. So, they, so very soprano, very, very lyric. Very soprano, yeah. very lyric. Right. I'm a Mimi. You know, all of those kinds of things. And then so, I call you with Annie Get Your Gun. That's right. <laughs> so the, <laughs> part of it was this uh, this feeling of, oh my gosh, I love this yeah, character. Right. I want to do this character. Right. And then the, the fear sets in of, Holy cow, <laughs> I'm a lyric. Can right. I really give the the warmth and the quality, sure. that vocal warmth to the character right. that, that's really required of this right. role? Made famous by, by leading ladies like Ethel Merman sure, right. and Betty Hutton Dick, back in the day. Husky yes. voices, right? yeah. Beautiful, and Bernadette Peters mm -hmm. and Reba McIntyre in, in the uh, revival. Right, right. So that was definitely something that I considered. In addition to the woman herself. So kind of setting aside the vocal elements of what Annie needed, yeah. and then understanding the woman herself. Right. Which for me as an actor, uh, I don't separate the two. I don't separate uh, being a vocalist from being an actor. I feel right. like you have it's to have- one of the same. Absolutely, you have to have a total immersion of yeah. the two in order to really make a solid character for musical theater and opera, yeah. regardless. Yeah. And my training has, has really lent to that. Um, I did a, a wonderful master class with Deborah Voigt, and Deborah actually did this role, mm -hmm. which was a huge inspiration for me. She oh. did this role uh, toward the latter part of her career. Okay. And in this master class that I did with Deborah, who, by the way, is, is one of the most warm, genuine people you'll ever meet in, in your life. I loved being around her. But we talked so much about the fusion of character with voice, mm -hmm. character with strength of voice, character with stability of yeah. voice, but also character with the fragility of the voice, mm -hmm. and, and how you can use all of these things from your training, in especially in an operatic background, right. 
to lend a very human quality to your sound and therefore give more of this um, relatability to the character. So when you say that, so it's different than like straight opera. Absolutely. Where you're singing these big, full, round notes all the time. When you're saying character, what does that look like vocally? Well, in an opera, too, you have to do the same, though. There okay. are times where you have these very, very quiet moments. Right. You still have the structure of your support under those notes. And, and for me, that's, that's kind of a, a pelvic floor support. That's mm. a, a breath support mm. that will allow me to, to lend some sort of emotion to the sound. Okay. So I have to do the same with musical theater. Uh, I don't. I really don't like separating out the sounds. Yeah, but interesting. But to our ears and to our our kind of societal view, our right. our we are trained in in today's theater world right. to really identify the that the sounds are different. That musical th theater sound is different from an opera sound, and it is a roundness to the tone that we're identifying. But for me, I don't like to necessarily separate those out. I still well, and, and you were talking uh, with me earlier about the fact that they did scientific studies with the vocal tone, right? That is exactly and they actually right. found out that they were the same exact quality of Absolutely. voice. Absolutely, same frequency. Completely two different. Same amplitude. Two oh, different yeah. singers, yes. opera and kind of more pop opera. Absolutely. Or pop. Mm -hmm. Pop. Mm -hmm. And and they matched it, and it was. Oh, it was a fascinating study um, done by Dr. Brian Gill, who huh. was previously at NYU and and is now at, at Indiana University. Yep. And I did a, a pedagogy um, a conference with him. Yes. And in this study, he, he took the uh, sound waves created by David Phelps, pop singer, um, very much in the gospel world, yep. singing a high C, and Luciano Pavarotti also singing a high C, you know, Nessun Unbelievable high C. voices. Yes, so stellar singers, and we can clearly, when we listen to them, and we listen to them sing, both of their songs individually and both of the high seas individually apart from one another yeah. listening to them and saying our the those of us who were in this pedagogy conference we said absolutely that's a, a more of a belt yeah. and this is more of an operatic uh, quality to the right, sound right. how in the world could they possibly have the same science how, could the same scientific sound wave be achieved yeah. from these different sounds that we perceive our ear uh, to differentiate, yep. and they when they pulled up the um, the wave. Oh gosh, I'm totally forgetting the name. But the the sound, sound waves, waves. There was yeah. like a spectrometer yeah. essentially. When they pulled up those uh, the diagnostics on those, they were exactly the same. And so it comes down to kind of the science of right. singing, right? Which as as an actor, you're thinking, oh my gosh, don't don't even bring science into this. or so much emotion into it. But no, science is very right. Much a so part there's of a it. lot of kids yeah. that really are fascinated with musical okay. theater, mm -hmm. um, and they're almost scared of of being classically trained. What would you suggest to them as far as a vocalist? Would you say? Mm -hmm. Go for it. Do classical vocal training as a base, or what do you say? Well, as a teacher, as a voice teacher yeah. with my own private studio, in addition to being an artist, I tell my students that they have to have a foundation in good singing. Mm -hmm. And that good singing comes from an understanding of, of how you produce sound in general. Right. Regardless of what you're going to be singing. If right. it's going to be pop, if it's going to be musical theater, if it's going to be opera, if it's going to be Irish jig, you need to have a good solid foundation of what your voice is capable of, mm. and then you can produce whatever, whatever genre or right. style of right. singing that you want, right. you can solidly and, and healthily do so. Right. And so I always start as a foundation for my students, and, and certainly it was this way for myself, start them with classical repertoire. Yeah. And that's because you understand vowel placement. You understand the um, all of the mechanics around producing and and um, using, utilizing enough breath mm -hmm. and quality of breath. Yeah. And subglottal pressure, um, flow, right. all of these things. Right. And I'm I'm kind of a, a vocal scientist myself. I'm I get really geeky <laughs> about it. <laughs> well it's, so it's, 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 it's so important fun. like yeah. what we're hearing a lot from right now is is pop stars that are losing their voices because they didn't have a foundation uh -huh. yeah. of training. And so what I'm encouraging people that are I'm connecting with, I'm like, go get some training because even if you become famous, yeah. someday 
you will need that to fall back on. Your Absolutely. voice can only do so much if you're not using it. And I am a huge proponent for being a flexible singer. Right. I was not comfortable belting in my in my early years. Mm. In my 20s, I had a really, well, I was very insecure about it because I was primarily operatic. Yeah. At that point, I was full opera, full tilt at yeah. Portland State. You know, I was in the Portland Opera Apprentice program. I was going opera all the way. Right. And um, a wonderful conductor, actually the organ symphony pops conductor at that time, Norman Layden, who was in his late 80s. <laughs> and he had been Glenn Miller's arranger back in, in the 1940s wow. when they were enlisted in the Air Force together, which is wow. really amazing. He was the longtime conductor for the organ symphony pops program. And he heard me once again from that telecast. Mm. I mean, it was, like I said, the greatest audition that I could have ever sure. had an opportunity to do. Sure. But he heard me on that telecast and they hired me to do um, a concert engagement with the Oregon Symphony just shortly after my year. But he heard that, he heard the quality of my sound and he felt like I could be more versatile than what I felt I was. Mm. And through his guidance, his mentorship, and wonderful voice teachers that I had throughout the years, um, I was able to to become more comfortable with a musical theater sound and a an operatic sound. Wow. And I feel like now, being in my in my late thirties, um, I feel so much more comfortable taking yeah. on a role like Annie and, yeah. and achieving a belt. Right. Because I have years and years and years of a really solid classical foundation. Now. So important that training component, and so yeah. that your voice will last. And I've got to tell you, in our rehearsals, um, what you've been able to do is take that training and really say, "Hold on, this is this is what I'm prepared to do within that." And you're really aware of your limitations. Absolutely. Because exactly. if you start pushing outside of that, all of a sudden you lose your voice. That's exactly and right. there's so many rehearsals coming in, and so many performances that yeah. if you don't don't take care of this instrument it's not going to last yes. so knowing those parameters and say I'm prepared to do this is a really important conversation to have between uh, between a performer and the director yes right well you're training for a marathon right so you're coaching us to to do this for the long term yeah. not a, a short-term stint so if you're training for a marathon um, as a runner you don't go out and run 20 miles on the first day that you're right, training. Right. You, you work in, in increments. And as a vocalist, as, as an actor on stage who is also singing at the same time, you have to use the same process, yeah. both mentally and physically. And I look at myself as an athlete. Everything that I do um, with on the stage and with my character is, is a very physical process. My instrument sure. is within me. Sure. It's not external. And so I have to take precautions for that, but I also have to understand and be very self-aware yeah. of how the instrument works, how I'm feeling that day, um, where the structure of my sound is, and, and how I can modify it if I need to yeah. in accordance with what is going on physically that day, and mentally as right. well, emotionally. Right. There are many things that you have to, to take into consideration. I think the other part is sometimes you're into a rehearsal, and like you say, emotionally or physically, you're just not there. Yeah. To have that open dialogue to say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull back today, just because I know that mm -hmm. I need to just save it, mm -hmm. instead of, I think sometimes directors, they just want more and more and more and more, give it to me strong, and sometimes that's just not within your wheelhouse of that particular day. We're still coming into those performances and there's a long way to come, but having those communications, I've got to oh, tell absolutely. you, between I mean, you and Rob Harrison, are, you guys are just, there's such a great dynamic between the two of you guys playing this role and seeing you guys on stage. It's going to be quite fantastic. Oh, see. Rob is an outstanding colleague. I mean, exactly what you would want in someone that you have to work with right. on stage so closely. Yeah. Someone who's very intuitive as well, who is is very well trained, and you can see it, you can hear it. Yeah. it it's so much fun to work with other singer actors yeah. who have the same process going into this, but who are just great people. Yeah. And I feel like everyone in this cast is that way. Well, we are really looking forward to The Countdown Has Begun. We're just days away here, a couple of weeks away from the, uh, the show. So hope you can join us here at the Elsinore Theatre. And looking forward to working with you and Rob and the whole team.